Welcome to the Agile to Agility Conference. It's a real honor to be here to introduce the conference and some top-notch speakers. I want to introduce myself a bit. My name's Kristen Cox and I've worked in government for a long time. I've worked for a few governors. And let me tell you my story, my journey in relation to this conference. Many years ago in 2007, at the height of the recession in the United States, I took on a very large agency, one of the largest in the state at the time. And we did eligibility. Um, one of many programs we ran was eligibility. People who needed unemployment insurance or Medicaid or what we now call SNAP, food stamps, things like that. So people would apply. And if you can imagine as the economy was tanking, the need for services went up exponentially. In fact, we had a 60% increase in caseloads over a very short period of time. And we were floundering. You know, what do you do, especially when you have limited revenue, revenues on the decline, and you have more people in need? Now, in those cases, it's really easy just, just to say, I need more money. I need more staff. Hey, I need a new piece of te technology to solve this problem. Or I need more data and a new data dashboard to figure out what's going on. My introduction to the idea of flow uh, came right at this time, and I'm so grateful that it did because my mindset started to shift. There'd been a lot of discussions about buying new call center technology. In fact, we had just implemented a big new piece of uh, technology, kind of a case management system. None of those things had made a difference. And when I read the goal, uh, kind of a seminal book by Dr. A.L.A. Goldratt that talked about flow and where to focus, it started to shift my mind. And we started to apply some of these concepts and understanding that even though we're usually organized vertically, right? We have organizations and divisions and programs and, um, org charts, our clients move horizontally. They move across our programs and our data systems and all of our products and services. You know, They have a, a kind of a more horizontal um, experience with us. When I started to recognize that, we started to finally make an impact. And by applying some really key concepts around constraints management and understanding flow, we were able to absorb the 60% increase in caseloads, actually reduce our budget from 80 million to 50 million, and became one, top, one of the top 10 in the country when it came to quality. And that was the beginning of my journey. And then we took these concepts of flow and applied them to child welfare systems, and in the prison, and in business permitting, and in the labor department, and any kind of place you could imagine we applied it and guess what we found? That the principles are always applicable. I don't care what environment you're in, if you're a technology uh, company or you provide services, or you're in healthcare or whatever it may be, flow exists. And flow is really the uninterrupted movement of something from point A to point B with high, high quality. Right? We never compromise on quality. So a few concepts that are really important to me that hopefully will be reinforced in this conference with some of these great speakers. Um, number one, where do we start when we're thinking about flow? It's very easy to approach problems from our perspective, the immediate problem we see before us. But I think really good flow or really good value streaming and really good what I call systems thinking looks at the whole system. Uh, I know this personally, I'm actually blind. And uh, for many years, in the beginning of my life, I was on a form of welfare in the United States, Social Security Disability Income, trying to get my life put back together, and I'm very grateful that I did. But I experienced the system in a very dysfunctional way. Um, pieces of the system worked, right? Pieces of it worked. But my whole movement from dependence to independence luckily happened because I had some really good mentors that came into my life not because the system was working. In fact, I experienced a very dysfunctional system where the parts of the system didn't work well together. So in this work, we can improve pieces of a system, but until we figure out how to improve the entire system and understand how the parts work together, we can often get what we call local optimization in this field. That is fixing a part of the system without the entire system getting better. It'd be like building a staircase from point A to point B and fixing individual steps, but not all the steps are there for the person to actually travel throughout the whole journey. So it's really important in this work for us to get above, to step up and look down and look at what are all the parts that need to be part of this. Otherwise, we can improve little processes, little pieces of it, and you won't see big impacts. In fact, I think in government and the private sector, one of the biggest challenges we face in the terms of uh, operational improvement is 
not understanding what the big system is. And this has massive implications. We have limited time and attention. We wanna make sure we're focused on those parts of the system that are gonna make the biggest difference. So I hope that's something you can take away as you think about how to apply the concepts you're gonna to learn today. It's also really important to understand that so much of our work is invisible to us, right? It's buried deep in operations. Um, if you're in manufacturing, you can actually go to the plant floor and see it. But we know in our economy, we're flipping from a goods economy to a services economy. And in a services economy, it's much more difficult to see the flow of work, right? It's very difficult to see it. So sometimes we just put up our hands and give up. Um, the tools that we use and hopefully what you'll learn throughout this conference will help you make what's invisible visible because you can't fix what you can't see and this is coming from a blind person so take it seriously we've got to make our work visible so that we have a fighting chance to understand where we need to improve how we need to improve it how do all the parts work together otherwise we're just playing whack-a-mole and i see a lot of organizations even that do great value streaming haven't gone up big enough to see the whole system and so they end up fixing pieces of it and the other parts are invisible to them right because they haven't looked big enough they haven't gone broad enough in how they approach um, defining and scoping their system now that may seem tricky how do i scope my system right how do i know what's in or what's out and it's very simple for me what is the customer who's our primary customer and what is that primary customer's fundamental need and if we start from that place and look back from there we can figure out what are all the policies and parts and process that need to come together to deliver on that. So for example, take healthcare. Um, you know, you could fix a lot of little pieces in the system. You could fix the labs or the intake process, lots of pieces you could fix. But what does the customer or the patient ultimately want? They want to be successfully treated and diagnosed and leave the hospital. That means I've got to figure out how to get the labs the doctors, the testing, the intake, the physical therapy. I need to figure out how all of those parts and processes need to work together to deliver on what the customer, or in this case, the patient, ultimately wants. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see in this work. It goes back to systems thinking. We fix our little piece and we miss the big picture and we can make it very simple. Who's our primary customer and what does that primary customer ultimately expect, want, and need? and go back from there. What do we need to pull in to make that happen? And that helps us start getting our head around what is this system, this thing we actually need to improve. So finally in this work, what's so interesting when you think about systems and improving the flow in a system, where the real interesting stuff happens is not how each piece is working on its own, but how do the work parts work together? What are those rules of, what I call rules of flow? that we need to put in place to make sure all the parts work in harmony to achieve that ultimate goal the primary customer wants. So going back to the hospital setting, how do you really synchronize in the flow, the length of stay and making sure the physician and the discharge and the social worker and the labs and the physical therapist, how does that work so all of them are synchronized to get the patient what he or she needs when they need it? That's a much more mature way of looking at flow. When you've got to bring a lot of pieces together to make this happen, what's much easier for us sometimes in this work of operations is just to take one little piece, the labs or the discharge process, and fix that little piece. But if we can't get the parts to work together, we miss the mark. The patient isn't any better off. So how do we get the parts to work together? How do the handoffs work? We call that full kidding. Um, synchronization, how do we signal to all the parts when to act, what not, when not to act? How do we control the work in process, all the work coming in so we're not overwhelming the people and they can all focus on what they need to focus on and get it done quickly? Again, in the work I've seen, one of our biggest mistakes is because we're fixing a tiny piece of the process or the whole system, um, we don't understand what the parts are and in that makes the problem, creates the problem, we don't know what we need to do to make the parts work together. It's sometimes harder work. But at the end of the day, if we want to know we made an impact, that all of our efforts, a value stream, or, or using Agile, or whatever we're going to do matters, we've got to take on the entire system, and we've got to look at it from the customer's perspective. Going back to my story, going blind. When I entered a system of lots of case management and assessments and paperwork and documentation, I am sure the people behind the scenes cared deeply about their work and wanted to make a difference. 
And in their own right, each one of them was trying to make their piece work well. But from my perspective, the pieces didn't work well and it was really hard to navigate the bureaucracy. It was so overwhelming that I was one of the lucky ones that found my independence and got off the system because of these great mentors. What we do has high stakes big implications, private sector, nonprofit, government, it doesn't matter. There are people that we serve, our employees want to know they're successful, they want to play a winnable game. And those of us in this work, if we can't see the big system, we fail those that we serve. So today, as you go throughout this conference and listen to these amazing speakers and understand flow and operations, let's keep in mind, what are we here for? And it's for those we serve and what do they ultimately need, and let that define and scope the systems we take on to understand the flow of work. And look, I've done this in homeless systems, people with homelessness and behavior health, to simple business transactions. Flow exists, but it's up to us to make the impact those we serve deserve. All right, thank you so much, and best of luck.